This week we're going to introduce you to typography for the web. This slideshow will um, explain a little bit about type for the web and give you some tips as to how to design your typography um, best for this medium. A very famous quote is that web design is 95% typography and when you consider how much information is conveyed through text on the web you'll start to understand that this is pretty much a, a very accurate ballpark of why typography is important on the web. So what is web typography? For starters, we have web safe system fonts, we have font stacks, we have web fonts and we have at font face fonts. So what are all of these options? Web safe system fonts. These are the fonts that are on your computer. However, different computers have different fonts, especially when you're looking at the difference between Mac and PC. There's actually a small list of fonts that are common on most devices and I'll just show you that list now. We have Arial, Helvetica if you're on a Mac, Times New Roman or Times, Courier New, Courier, Verdana, Georgia, Palatino, Garamond, Bookman, Comic Sans, Trebuchet, Ariel Black and Impact. So it looks like a long list, but if you have a look at those fonts, it doesn't give you a whole lot of stylistic choices. And in fact, a lot of them you would just rule out altogether because they are plain ugly. So what does that leave a designer to do? With the coming of CSS, we had choices of so this brings us to web fonts. A web font is a font file hosted by an online font library. So it's no longer relying on what's installed on the computer. It can actually access this from a central server on the web. There's a huge variety of free fonts available. So you have a lot more choice when it comes to your design and typography. Your HTML file will include a link tag which links to the file and the CSS will use the font you have chosen to style the text. So here is an example of the link tag and you've seen that used before for your own custom CSS style sheet as well as the bootstrap framework. And in your CSS you would specify font family and then you would give the name of the font that you're, you are accessing um, from Google Fonts or wherever you are getting that online web font. Now the quality is not as good as many paid fonts. So if you're thinking you're going to use Helvetica New for free, um, I'm afraid you're going to have to rein in your expectations. But that said, Google Fonts uh, is one of the bigger providers and it does have a good selection and in many instances those are good quality fonts like Open Sans and Montserrat are quite nice ones. So here's a screenshot of Google Fonts and these are just the ones that appear on the front page. You can see that you can select what categories you are after, so serif, sans serif, display, handwriting, etc. Um, you can decide what thickness you're after, if there's a slant or width you want. Um, and all up there are 877 font families to choose from. And the remaining way that you can use a font online is at font face. This means you are hosting your own font file. You're not linking to Google or to another font provider. You actually put this up on your server so that your website can directly access it. Um, to do so, you don't just upload the font that you have on your system because usually that's in a file format that won't work on every device. Instead, you have to use a font generator like fontsquirrel.com. Now, to use that, um, you need to make sure that you have copyright permissions and this will create web safe font files to use in your website. Um, and I'll just reinforce, you must, must, must have a license to use and host that font 
because you can get in trouble for copyright violation. And in fact, there have been instances where companies have been sued for over $2 million for font copyright violations on websites. So it's unlikely that anyone will try and sue you for $2 million because your website probably will not be making that much money, um, but they can demand that the font, the, uh, the website is taken down and they can actually sue you for an amount that they think is the um, acceptable damages. So please make sure you don't use any fonts that you know you have to pay a, a large amount of money for because you can get in trouble. So that explains how to do the web typography and we'll go into that in further detail in the flipped classroom activities this week. Once you've got your web font, well, what can you do with it to make sure your type looks good on the screen? Well, first off, we want you to make your hierarchy clear. So a lot of what we talk about in the web design unit is about information design and having this hierarchy of information that clearly guides the user through the web page, through the information they need to know. Because people don't read web pages like they read novels. They skim, they scan, and so you really need to use this hierarchy of headings and subheadings so that people can quickly find the section that they want to read. So with a type hierarchy, I'd recommend you have three levels in your hierarchy. Level one is the most important information, that is for your page title. For level two, you are organising your design into sections. So as I said, people skim through the page to find the sections they want to read. You want to make sure it is really, really easy to find those sections. And level three is the meat of the design, the copywriting. And in fact, what a lot of people do, because they want to find the fancy fun fonts first, they will look for the fonts for levels one and two and leave three as an afterthought. I actually recommend you do it the other way around. You find your body text font first because that is going to make up the bulk of the information on your web page. That is what the user will see most. And so it is the thing that makes the most difference to the design, far more than what your heading font does um, in influencing the overall design. So with this type hierarchy, how do you show the difference between level one, two, and three? Well, first off, different font sizes are useful to show the difference between them. Contrasting typefaces as well. Now, please note, please, please, please don't use more than two typefaces on your page um, because any more than that, and I'll show you later in an example, it gets really, really messy and it's hard to see where to look to. Um, often when we're talking about the contrasting typefaces, uh, people will traditionally use a sans serif and a serif. You can do that. You don't have to. Just make sure they fit well together. And in fact, you can use one typeface and just use different weight sizes and styles of that typeface. And that does ensure that they work together well. Also use colour, but use it carefully. By now you should have a colour palette for your website and that colour palette should be um, extensive enough to provide colours for different situations. So if you're going to use colour for different levels of heading, make sure it fits with the overall look and feel of your website. Make sure those colours are drawn from your colour palette. Um, don't make it messy, but make it eye-catching. Um, and it may be that you realise that your colour palette that you established earlier isn't sufficient, you may have to revisit that. I've seen a lot of the time people will have a very pastel colour palette and then realise that does not provide enough contrast to have readable headings if you're going to use those colours. So don't be scared to go back and fix your colour palette so that it works better. And remember to use spacing and proximity between the elements. Don't be scared of using white space in your design. It can help draw attention to the important elements and to identify this type hierarchy. So once you've got your type on the page, how can you style it? Well, make sure it is big enough to read easily 
um, especially if you have one of those infinite scroll websites because the way they work is that people will read them as they are scrolling and as you can imagine if people are reading and scrolling at the same time small text becomes incredibly hard to read. Now when we get to designing for mobile devices which is not until next week make sure your font is not too small and not too large. If it is too small on a mobile device, it is incredibly difficult to read. But then if it's too large, it doesn't fit with very good line lengths. Um, so it can appear really chopped and truncated. Um, so just find that nice sweet spot for a mobile device where it's easy to read and it's not too large to have nice line lengths. Make sure you let the text breathe. So don't use the default letting and kerning. Um, when it comes to the letting, or in CSS it's called line height, typically you're using um, 1.45 or 145% to give it a little bit more space. Use that white space, use um, line height, use kerning or letter spacing as it's called in CSS make sure it's not all squished together. So with readability, make sure you choose a legible and readable font. Now, yes, there are some very pretty fonts out there that you might think support the overall look and feel of the website, but if they're really, really hard to read, then it's not actually doing your user any favours. And in fact, if they find it too hard to read, they're not going to get in any information from your site. They're just going to go to a different website. And that's the worst case scenario. So that's one of the reasons I think choose your body text first. Make sure it is a clear, legible font. There are many choices out there and you can find subtle differences that help support your look and feel. It doesn't have to be over the top as in the example on the slide right now, um, which is a script font, which is difficult to read. Another thing is avoid typing in all caps. It's okay for occasional headings, but even then, have a really, really careful think about whether you should do it or not. Um, when we read fonts, when we read words, we actually first look at the overall shape of the world, word. Uh, so if you're having a look at that first word, night, on each line, in the instance with upper and lower case, we can see there's a capital K, there's a small N, there's a slight bump with the tittle on the I. The G has a descender, the H has an ascender. You know, we, we can see all of that making the bumpy outline and that actually speeds up our reading. And very importantly, from an accessibility point of view, if somebody has um, dyslexia, it is actually incredibly difficult to read all caps because the shape of the words just ends up looking the same. So wherever possible, use upper and lower case. When it comes to readability, also consider your line length. So the examples on the page here from Babbage, um, we've got the too narrow one, which is about 30 characters per line. And you can see that as you're reading it, the flow of the text is disrupted because you're constantly dealing with these line breaks. You go to the one that's too wide on the other hand and your eye sort of gets drawn along forever and by the end of it, you've kind of lost your place as to where to go to the next line. An ideal range is between 40 and 60 characters for a computer screen. For mobile devices, it's a bit less. It's probably 30 to 40 characters. But aim for, at this stage, 40 to 60 characters, um, which is around 11 to 15 words. And that will create line breaks at an appropriate pace so that people can just follow along with um, what they're reading. This is really important because I know that um, as designers, you're looking for what is has visual impact. Visual impact and legibility, readability, sometimes do not have the same goals. And you should always choose readability over prettiness. To that end, please don't centre or justify paragraph text. Um, perhaps there might be a good reason for it in very, very, very isolated instances. Don't 
assume that it is the first choice and the best choice because yes it makes everything nice and symmetrical but it makes it incredibly hard to read because as you are reading in English we read from left to right you get to the end of the line and then you're looking for the start of the next line if the start of the next line if it is left aligned or as they call right ragged um, you know where to find the start of the next line because they are, it is always below the line before it in a nice straight line and in fact that ragged right gives us a cue as to which line we're up to if you center the text you don't know where the next line starts it's very hard to read it slows your reading down if you justify the text and justify means that it is aligned both left and right like a newspaper column um, really you don't know where the line ends um, you know you, you see where it ends you go to the next line but it gives you no view, visual cue as to what line you are up to and so that is also very bad for reading so always opt for left align um, you can see here they've got an example of a very short sentence which they have center aligned and that works well but don't use it for huge huge paragraphs please Another thing to ensure when it comes to readability is that you have high contrast between the text and the background, especially if your readers are going to be, say, over 35 or 40. Um, the contrast vision starts going with age and it gets harder and harder to read light grey text on a white background or grey text on a black background. So we actually do have um, online tools you can use um, in a later class where we deal specifically with accessibility just be aware at this stage that you need to have this contrast between text and background the example on the screen is a bad example this is what not to do and again we'll revisit the idea of too many fonts <coughs> sorry so don't use too many fonts here you can see all of the fonts are fighting for attention you might think it's fancy, it catches uh, the eye, but in fact it makes it very difficult to read the page. So less is more. So overall with web typography, remember you need this hierarchy of three levels. You may want to go to four, but usually three is a good start to give um, clear differences between the levels of information. To indicate these levels, use font weight, font style, the size of the font and color and spacing to indicate these levels. You may not need to use all of them at once, um, but they work very well to create a visual focus to different levels of your fonts. Remember to keep to a 40 to 60 character line length when it comes to designing for the computer screen. When it comes to designing for a smartphone, 30 to 40 characters is appropriate, but for now, please stick to 40 to 60 characters. Give plenty of space to your type. So usually in web design, we're looking at a line height of 145%. That gives a little bit more breathing space than the default. And remember to keep your body text big enough to be read easily. So that means at least 18 pixels. And use contrast and white space to give some breathing room around your text as well and to direct the eye to important sections of the text. <laughs>